Hello everyone, I am the Manager Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a Commander from Jumpstart 2022, Audi Blight, Bad Influence. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my CCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel. But the very best way you can help support the channel is by Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck techs, gifts, and more. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Ani Blight is a 2-2 Devil Advisor for 2 Generic and 1 Red. She has a triggered ability that gives her a plus one plus one counter for each point of damage you receive from sources you control. This is definitely an interesting mechanic and actually prizes you for playing symmetric effects that hurt everyone as well as effects that only hurt you. I guess Ani Blight's advice isn't to stop hitting yourself, but to keep hitting yourself. Masochists rejoice with the devil on your shoulder then. If that wasn't enough, she has an activated ability where you pay 2 and tap her, removing X plus 1 plus 1 counters from her to deal that much damage to any target. This is amazing at potentially hitting multiple opponents if she were to have Vigilance. You can smack someone and then activate her sometime afterwards to ping them. Or if she can't get through blockers or pillow forts, burn opponents to death. Super useful. Since she sings your praises whenever you hurt yourself, let's go over how the deck goes about it. Starting off with the easiest way to do so, lands. Grand Colosseum, Tarnished Citadel, City of Brass, Barbarian Ring, and Ancient Tomb don't take up slots in the deck and can be used to ping yourself all by providing mana to power your cost. Tarnished Citadel and Ancient Tomb might be a bit pricey thanks to CDH, but at least they ping you for more than one damage which is pretty good. Speaking of, Mana Vault, which is now relatively more affordable than in recent memory, is an amazing mana rock in this deck. It's essentially a colorless dark ritual, but once you use it, you don't have to pay for it to untap it if you don't want to, since it then becomes a consistent source of 1 damage to you each upkeep you didn't pay to untap it. Super good here. I would also recommend Mana Crypt since it has the potential of dealing you 3 damage whenever you miss the coin flip in your upkeep, but it is currently at around $180. If you didn't buy it when it was less than $90, don't worry about it, you don't really need it. Mana Vault and Soul Ring will do just fine. Yeah, Soul Ring won't hurt you like Mana Crypt does, but we want to hurt our life totals, not our wallets. That being said, if you already have a Mana Crypt or don't mind getting one, then definitely swap it out over Soul Ring. Mana Crypt is definitely better for what the deck wants. That being said, they're all Mana Rocks, so so useful. Run both if you want. Anyways, enough eggshell walking over Mana Vault and Mana Crypt. Burning Earth and Mana Barbs help turn all or most of your lands into the previously mentioned Barbarian Ring and Company type effects. However, they are symmetric effects so they also hurt opponents. Any opponents not running any life gain effects or ways to prevent damage will have these enchantments damage accumulate very quickly. So not only do they help buff anti-blight but make it easier for you to win by picking opponents to death. Ankh of Mishra and Zozu the Punisher also punish the table for using lands by pinging them for 2 damage per landfall trigger. Symmetric effects that hurt opponents but benefit us technically make us more sadomasochist than just masochist, even more so when opponents start hating us for these land based punishment effects. Speaking of, Blood Moon is another backbreaking effect even though it doesn't really hurt their life totals, although it does hurt their will to live. An obviously amazing card in mono red decks, it makes monocly colored decks harder to play with, especially if they're not red. This will also shut down all of our lands, but at least Mana Barbs still pings us even if Blood Moon protects opponents from burning earth. That's well fine by me though. Pyrohemia and Warmonger also punish the table with some repeatable ping activations, making them for amazing mana sinks. Best of all, opponents can also activate Warmonger if they wanted to. So if it just so happens that you're not the arch enemy, Warmonger is an amazing political piece which is great. Best of all, it doesn't hit flyers, so good news for Auntie Blight. Goblin Artillery, Orcish Artillery, and Orcish Cannoneers can also be activated at instant speed, but aren't as encompassing as the previous two cards. That being said, being able to tap these at instant speed in order to give Anti Blight that extra 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters to potentially finish off an opponent is great, especially since they're also pinging any target for 2. Hate bears and weenies beware. Heartless Hunetsugu does it better though by hitting every player for half their life. Since this includes us, Hidetsugo is essentially Anti Blight's BFF. Activating him in response to combat damage can potentially take out an opponent from the game. Or when used with the other punishment effects in the deck, opponents may not even be able to tap lands for mana, play lands, or even spells at all. Well, if you have spell shock and play that is. This symmetric punishment is amazing especially against those storm and combo decks. Most times players show the combo and then it's assumed they'll win if uninterrupted. 
However, if they're taking 2 damage each time they cast a spell, will they win before they die? This enchantment is amazing here. Descent into Avernus is another amazing enchantment in the deck. The longer the games go on, the more damage this thing will be dealing to the table. Thus, the bigger Anti Blight gets as well, making it even easier to pick off opponents. Unfortunately, it also does give everyone an incremental amount of treasure tokens, which might essentially non-bow with the land punishing effects, but the fact remains that they're getting quite the cumulative burn as well as getting smacked by the devil on our shoulder. However, all these pale when compared to Volcano Helion and Wheel of Most Fortune. Well, at least in terms of dealing ourselves damage. When the Helion enters the battlefield, we can choose how much damage is dealt to us and target creature. While we can choose as high a value as we want, do be wary you don't accidentally set yourself up for an opponent taking you out of nowhere a la Randy Orton. That being said, we can essentially get rid of any creature or also an opponent with some spicy cards we're going to see further along. As for its echo cost, that doesn't really matter to us. We just care about its enter the battlefield trigger. Wheel of Misfortune does something similar as we can choose how much damage to receive from it. With opponents receiving so much damage, they might be privy to not choose such a high number, assuming they're not gaining life. Lastly, we have Jade Monolith, a blast from Magic's past that a lot of you might not even know exists. So running this might get you those hipster points in your pot. Thanks to Jade Monolith, we can redirect any damage that we dealt to one of our creatures back to us. Unfortunately, this won't trigger Auntie Blight if you don't control the source of damage. However, if you did, then it's a great way to protect your creature along with hurting yourself. But even if you don't, it's still a good way to protect key creatures from damage, particularly our commander. Speaking of protecting our commander, since this is for all effects and purposes of Ultron deck, we're naturally running cards like Champion's Helm and Swiftfoot Boots to equip onto Auntie Blight or other key creatures like Heartless Hidetsugu. So these are no-brainers here. Same with Plaza of Heroes that doesn't even take up a slot in the deck. Just keep in mind when you have Blood Moon in play. Also, beyond Hexproof, the deck's also running Hammer of the Zon for the indestructibility. Not only that, but the Hammer will attach itself to Anti Blight when it enters the battlefield, as well as making it so your following equipment also auto-attach whenever they enter the battlefield. This is crucial since the deck has plenty of equipment in it. Due to the Voltron nature of the deck, Smoke is also included. Not only will this aggravate opponents from being a stacks piece depriving them of untapping more than one creature, but it also protects us against Horde effects, well, assuming they're already tapped and or don't have Vigilance. The point being that Smoke also protects us since we're basically only attacking with our commander and our light-armed creatures. We are hitting ourselves plenty after all. That being said, Ani Blight also has the potential of being the angel on our shoulder, well, only when it suits her. Giving her life link with equipment like Basilisk Collar, Batterbone, Batter Skull, Luxodon Warhammer, Resurrection Orb, and Shadow Spear is key to our survival. Us losing life pumps her, so giving her life link means getting that life back and then some after she deals combat damage. These equipment also bring other useful keywords like Vigilance, Trample, and Death Touch. Recall that her having Vigilance makes it easier for her to hit and then activate her ability to finish someone off. Having Trample and Death Touch makes blocking her moot. Also, of these equipment, Resurrection Orb is amazing since it brings her back from the dead. In response to her dying, we can activate her ability to not lose the plus one plus one counters and then she comes back. Shadow Spear is also useful at removing Hexproof and Indestructible from our opponent's permanents, making it easier to burn them. While these are amazing on our commander, keep in mind that we can also equip our artillery creatures with them, or better yet, Harlot Hidetsugu. Witch's Clinic is another way to give lifelink to our commander, but only our commander. But that's fine because she's the main lifelink target anyways. But again, if you have Harlot Sugu out, try and give him lifelink whenever possible. Or maybe it won't matter if we take damage. Platinum Angel and Platinum Imperion are absolutely amazing in this deck for that very reason and also worth protecting. With the Angel we can't lose and our opponents can't win. So if we keep taking damage even though we're at zero life, we're still triggering anti blight but don't lose. Same with the Imperion. We can't gain life and we can't lose life, but any damage we take will still trigger effects that care about it. We just don't lose any life due to damage. The rules right here. This means that we can choose a number beyond human comprehension like tree 3 with things like Volcano Helion and Wheel of Misfortune and that'll trigger Bonnie Blight for that much, but we won't lose any life. Amazing. Brash Tonner and Stuffy Doll are the spicy cards I mentioned earlier with Volcano and Helion. These indestructible creatures are awesome in the deck for so many reasons. First off, they're amazing blockers. No one will want to swing into you with any fatty that doesn't have trample or evasion. Second, anytime we ping or can ping creatures, choosing these means being able to deal that same damage to an opponent. So having Volcano Hellion choose either of these as its target could potentially end the game. Thirdly, if we really want it to be extra spicy, we can choose ourselves with Stuffy Doll. Since we control it and it's the one dealing damage to us, that will also trigger anti-blight. Finally, if we are in the Beeping Heart zone for life, we can use General's Regalia with them. This card is essentially the opposite of Jade Monolith. If we would die due to some damage dealing effect, we can instead redirect that damage to Brash Totter or Stuffy Doll. Similarly, we can just redirect to any other creature we might have if the situation is dire. However, combining these with Heartless Hidetsugu is also an amazing play, much to your opponent's chagrin. 
While the deck can still win via burning our opponents as well as making it so they're hurting themselves, the main reason for us hurting ourselves is to win via commander damage. While we already saw how to make her get swole in order to not just win but prevent us from losing too, let's see how we can assure the victory via Voltron. Jessica Thrice Reborn and Two-Handed Axe, tripling and or doubling her power is definitely one way to help get that commander damage win with minimal effort. In fact, getting Jessica out early when an opponent has no blockers in the air, and all we have to do is make sure we've hurt ourselves for 5 damage before swinging in, and then we win. So we have the potential of winning out of nowhere and quite quickly. Caddis Emberclaw Familiar helps us kill off the entire table by hitting just that hapless opponent. However, since it's Caddis stealing the damage, it's not considered commander damage, but direct damage. No matter, if Oni Blight had a ridiculous number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on herself, it should be enough for the win anyways. Grafted Exoskeleton makes it even easier for that. All you need is 10 damage to win the game. This is also useful to equip to Heartless Hidetsugu if you had ways of redirecting his damage or preventing yourself from losing the game. Rogue's Passage and Chandra's Ignition also facilitate the win. The land by making Ani Blight unblockable and the Sorcery by literally just killing off all of our opponents. This is also one of the best cards in the deck and drawing into it is essentially game over. The Voltron nature of the deck also helps with mana acceleration. Equipping Ani Blight with the Reaver Cleaver is absolutely insane. The amount of treasures created can set you up for life. We're probably creating enough treasure tokens to roll over into the next 3 games. Easily. If that weren't enough, it also pumps her and gives her trample. Super busted. Dowsing Dagger, Sword of Hearth and Home, and Sword of the Animus are more equipment that pump our commander, as well as providing mana acceleration via land-based ramp. Well, the dagger doesn't technically ramp, but once the equipped creature hits a player, it transforms into Lost Veil, which can tap for 3 mana of any one color. The other two can ramp for basic lands with the latter being better since it triggers on attack. However, Sword of Hearth and Home also provides protection from white and green, making it harder to block our commander, as well as hit her with removal spells like Swords of Prowshers and the like. Plus, most fight effects are green, so she's safe from that. Nikthos Shrine to Nyx and Terrain Generator are some more lands that help accelerate our mana and thus don't take up slots in the deck. Nikthos is a no-brainer here, and Terrain Generator helps us play extra lands per turn if we do into too many. But we'll see those cards in a bit. Wayfarer's Bobble, Navigation Orb, Burnish Heart, and Canoptic Wraith provide some more land-based mana acceleration, which is way better than artifact-based mana acceleration, especially in the Commander format where mass land destruction is unreasonably frowned upon. But that's a whole other can of worms. Koth, Fire of Resistance's first loyal ability doesn't ramp us per se, but it does get that basic mountain into our hand. If we haven't played a land yet, we can play it, so it's almost like land-based ramp in that sense. Or if you also had Terrain Generator out. This is also useful if you already have Lance and want to loot fodder for the loot effects in the deck, which we'll see in a bit. His minus 3 ability cares about how many mountains we control though, so it's good the deck is running so many of them. You can use this to kill off creatures or hit Rash Taunter or Stuffy Doll for lack of worth while targets. His emblem is amazing and easily achievable. It's essentially a Valkut the Molten Pinnacle, but deals one more damage. If you're patient, you can wait to ultimate Koth in order to eventually get more emblems of his further along. Valakut is also included in the deck since it doesn't take up a slot and is amazing interaction, especially against potential chump blockers or hate bears. Going back to Mana Acceleration, Ruby Medallia is the only other Mana Acceleration rock in the deck along with Mana Vault and Soul Ring. However, this one's better since it reduces the cost of our red spells, so it's basically giving us one colorless mana per red spell cast. As to how the deck is drawing cards, Mono Red doesn't have such a hard time about it. Tome of Legends is amazing here since we're always going to be attacking with our commander, so this will almost always have a page counter on it to remove to draw a card. Endless Atlas will almost always draw us a card with each activation, especially since the deck is running 20 mountains. This is why we don't care about our Blood Moon, plus having 20 mountains makes it easier to always have lands to ramp for with the previously mentioned basic land, mana acceleration, as well as triggering Volokut and Koth's emblem. Mind's Eye is another amazing way to draw lands and we're almost guaranteed at least 3 cards one turn around the table if we have 3 open mana for our opponent's draw steps. Notwithstanding the deck is also running, Faithless Looting, Wild Guest, Tormenting Voice, Thrill of Possibility, Electric Revelation, and Cathartic Reunion. Unfortunately, apart from generic colorless card advantage, red is usually limited to either impulsive draw, looting, or wheeling. That's not that bad though since we are digging through our library anyways for those game ending cards as well as any key cards but most of them exist in functional multiples, so we're fine. Megas of the Wheel and Reforged the Soul are the other wheels along with Wheel of Misfortune, but these are straight to the point. If you already have a Wheel of Fortune, you can swap it in for Megas of the Wheel if you wanted to. Valakut Awakening is a one-sided wheel, but we get to choose how many cards to get rid of. Fortunately, they're only bottom decked, so we don't lose them. Being able to do this at instant speed is amazing. Best of all, it doesn't even take up a slot on the deck for being an MDFC land. That being said, it doesn't take up a slot in the deck only if you aren't greedy and play it as a land when you need the land drop, so keep that in mind. 
Bonders, Enclave, and War Room are some more card advantage pieces that don't take up slots in the deck. These are no-brainers in a mono-red deck like this one, especially when our commander will satisfy the Enclave's cause. Unfortunately, losing life with War Room will not trigger Anti Blight, but at least we can draw a card with it. Chandra Torch of Defiance is the only impulsive draw effect in the deck, but that's only with her first loyalty ability. It's still great if we're running out of gas and if we don't cast it, she deals 2 damage to each opponent. Damage that's definitely already adding up. Her second ability is straight up Mana Acceleration. Her minus 3 can be used as removal or to hit Brash Taunter or Stuffy Doll for lack of worth while targets. Her emblem is amazing for the same reason. We can either burn opponents, burn ourselves, or any of our indestructible buddies. As for what we want to draw into, naturally we just want to avoid running out of gas. But drawing into interaction is also a definitely a solid reason. Chaos Warp is the best removal spell in the deck since it can get rid of pesky lands that can deal with our commander or absolutely any other aggravating permanent at instant speed. It could even protect us from our own punishment pieces if it came down to it. Blasphemous Act and Vandal Blast are the deck's mass removal spells. Best thing about Blasphemous Act is that more often than not, it's going to just leave Anti Blight alive in order to have her go smack face unimpeded. Well, her and Brash Taunter and Stuffy Doll, so bonus points for having them in play when resolving it. Deflecting Swat and Tabal's Trickery are some more cards that can not only be used to protect our commander, but also hinder that combo player from winning the game. You'd be surprised how many people forget about Tabal's Trickery. This view is just an idea of how, how to build around Ani Blight bad influence. What I love about this commander is that she gives an interesting twist on the Voltron archetype by also combining it with the Punishment archetype. Not only does she reward us for running this symmetric damage dealing effects, but she actually encourages us to get hurt more so than opponents. At least she deals with our opponents for us while we're smacking ourselves. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Bandit Kirby and happy brewing.